Can you beat Pokemon Fire Red using only the Pokemon you find at the very beginning of the game? Well, yeah, but the real question is, how good are they? Welcome back everyone to another video. A lot of you guys might remember the video I made a while ago on beating Pokemon Emerald using only Route 1 Pokemon, and Jesus Christ that video blew up out of nowhere. Well now I'm going to continue that series. This time I'll be beating Fire Red using only the first 6 Pokemon you find in the game. The beginning Pokemon are usually used by developers to introduce new players into the game, and while they are serviceable early game when you catch them, they usually get completely power crept late game by just better Pokemon. Like, why would you use Butterfree and Beedrill when you could be using Dragonite and Machamp? In this video, I'll be challenging this idea and beating the whole game just by using these weak Pokemon and to see if they can be viable in the long run. The rules will be the same as last videos. So to quickly recap, set mode will be on, I won't use any items from my bag during battle, and I can only use these 6 Pokemon, Rattata, Pidgey, Mankey, Spearow, Caterpie and Weedle. No starters as they get enough love as it is. And also I will need an HM slave to use Surf. But now that's established, let's start this run and see if this starter team can hang in with the big boys. So the game begins, I choose Bulbasaur and play for a few minutes until I get the ability to buy Pokeballs and unlock Ferdinand Forest. Now it's time to catch our team. I find all 6 Pokemon that I'll be using and catch all of them. One added challenge I'll be doing is that I have to settle with the first Pokemon that I catch. I am not allowed to recatch any Pokemon if they have bad natures or IVs, so I have to settle with whatever I find to make things harder. Even if I get a Mankey with a modest nature, I have to use it. Well. You never know, special tagging primate maybe? So now I have my team, I prepare to do some grinding to be ready for the first gym, but as I do, let's have a look at our early game Pokemon's base stats and move pool to see if we can find any strategies to use them with. The first Pokemon on our team is our boy Pidgeot, the original bird Pokemon, very iconic and easily recognisable. Unfortunately first generation, its stats are mediocre, they're not bad, but they're not amazing either. One problem is that it doesn't have the best moves to use. TM Return is by far its strongest attack and it is actually very good in this Pokemon, but unfortunately in this game TMs are not reusable, so most likely you'll have to settle for Secret Power. Feather Dance and Fly are also usable options, but this Pokemon can have some uses in your run and is not all that bad. The next Pokemon, Raticate, is arguably better but arguably worse at the same time. Its attack is slightly higher along with its speed but it's more frail. On the other hand, it does have a slightly better move pool, with options like strength for AE based power, while also being able to learn the move tutor moves like Thunder Wave and Double Edge which is very powerful. The Guts ability is also quite nice. Potentially this Pokemon can function as a good glass cannon. Next up is Fearow, and this is actually not a bad Pokemon. Unfortunately it kind of is just Pidgeot but better. It's less bulky, but it's faster and stronger. It has the move Drill Pick, which is just a better flying move. As much as we all like Bird Jesus, I think this is the better normal bird Pokemon. Remember to use TM Steel Wing also for rock coverage. Now, arguably the strongest Pokemon on our team is Primeape, which is surprisingly strong for our first area Pokemon. It has the most power, with good enough speed to outspeed most threats in this game. The fighting type is also strong, giving it great moves like Cross Chop, Rock Slide, Earthquake and Bulk Up, which is stupid strong after it sets up the bulk up, giving it great coverage. I'll try not to rely on this guy too much, as I don't want Primeape carrying my team through the whole game. The next Pokemon however, is, well, let's just say different. Similar yeah, to right, Beautyfly and Emerald, the bug type Pokemon in this game are bad. Butterfree is arguably the less bad of the two, just because it has good utility moves like Sleep Powder and Supersonic. Well, at the very least having some decent attacking moves, like Psychic, although its dual stab is pretty much useless with its base 45 attack which is measly, at least Butterfree can abuse hacks like a total bitch. Beedrill on the other hand, Beedrill on the other hand is, oh is no, by far the worst Pokemon in his team, Jesus Christ. The only thing Beedrill is capable of doing is attacking with its decent physical attack stat. But then you see that the best stab move it can learn is Twin Needle. What the hell? It doesn't even get Silver Wind. It can learn TM Sludge Bomb, which at least would make Beedrill 
usable as it's a very good move. But it turns out that you can't even get that TM until after you beat the Elite Four. Why? This Pokemon unfortunately has very little redeeming qualities and is basically a worse version of its teammates. To be honest, I'm not expecting much from this guy. But now that's clear, we train the team up. It was hard at first because our Pokemon are nowhere near as strong as our starter. Also, to make things worse, many of my Pokemon had really bad natures, which is problematic, but I'll roll with it anyway. Also, we give Bulbasaur the boot. Be, Be gone. gone! We beat the rival without too much trouble though. It did take a while since we were underleveled, but after that I proceed to the first gym afterwards. Brock sounds very hard. Until you see that I have a Mankey in my team, who can whip his rock types. But to make this not too easy, I'll restrict my leveling. My Bug Pokemon fully evolved now. They're not bad, for this part of the game at least. I faced Brock and it turned out that the battle was a complete joke. Even my level 10 Mankey destroyed him too easily. I guess it's because Onyx is really heavy, the move Low Kick will deal a lot of damage. But anyway, we'll proceed to Misty's gym and maybe there we'll find more of a challenge. We make our way through Mount Moon, beating everyone there and leveling up. We see the Dome and Helix fossils, but I just ignore them. Then we go to Cerulean City. I grind everyone to level 15, just to be ready for Rival Green, then go to Nugget Bridge. We do get outmatched by his Pidgeotto, as my own Pidgey hasn't evolved yet. It takes out two of our inferior Pokemon, but fittingly enough my own Pidgey finishes it off. Eventually, after that, the rest of his team goes down. We train a little bit more afterwards, then go to beat Misty and her Starmie was strong. Her first Pokemon Staryu goes down without a fight, but our Starmie, which is high level compared to our own team, wrecked most of our squad. But luckily my Mankey was able to stop it. This challenge isn't too easy, as I'm purposely trying to keep my level low. On the way to the SSN, my Spear and Rattata evolve at level 20, making them pretty strong for this part of the game. I also forgot to mention that my Mankey now has moved Mega Kick, which is really strong. But now everyone's at level 20. We have another rematch against Rival Green, and this time I wallop him. I overestimated the level of his Pokemon, and accidentally grinded a bit too much and found this to be just too easy, as now my own Pidgeotto outclasses his own. He goes down again, then we go to claim the third gym badge. Now we are a little bit under leveled again. This time I gave Beedrill some action, and it did put in some work by using Twin Needle and being Lieutenant Surge's first two Pokemon, but his final Pokemon, a decently high level Raichu, beat it down. I didn't expect its quick attack to kill my Beedrill at that point, but oh well. My Radicate also went down barely to hacks, but eventually my Butterfree managed to finish the job here. We go through Rock Tunnel, and I find that kid who teaches my Mankey to move Rock Slide. Unfortunately, I couldn't stop Mackey from stealing his lunch money. Poor kid. But the difficulty spike of the trainers does catch up with us a little bit, as we do struggle to get through. This is really apparent at our next rival green battle, where this time we are the outclassed ones. The tables have turned, as now my purred Pokemon is beaten down by his own. I send out the big guns Fearow, but stupidly Fury Attack flops, and even Fearow takes a lot of damage. Not a very good start, but his next Pokemon, Gyarados, was monstrous as it forces me out and beats down Mankey before eventually going down to Raticate. Annoyingly his Execute hacks the hell out of my rat and I don't risk switching out, but Beedrill then surprisingly goes on a rampage and beats down the next two Pokemon easily with Twin Needle. Hey, maybe I was wrong about Beedrill being bad, it even poisons Charmeleon before going down, nice. This gets tense as it succumbs to poison as Butterfree comes out. If it wasn't for Fearow getting a critical hit on Charmeleon, I probably would have gotten one hit KO'd and lost a battle. Wow, that was close. But it was quite tough. At least in Celdon City, I get loads of nice TMs like Fly and Brick Break to buff my team. Then we go to face Erica. Once again, I miscalculated here and managed to breeze through this fight using only my bird Pokemon. Not much to see here. After that, Mankey makes short work of Boss Giovanni before going to Pokemon Tower where I use Butterfree to farm special attack EVs. Then I get my Mankey to evolve into Primeape, and now it's a beast. On my way to Koga's gym, we are now pretty under leveled again compared to Koga's team, but I do just a bit of leveling up. Finally, my Pidgeotto evolves into Pidgeot, which is nice, so now my whole team is at its final form. We reach Koga at level 35 to level 36 and fight him, but to my surprise, we had a real challenge here, as his team is significantly higher level. I led off with Butterfree, 
who beats his first Pokemon coughing easily with Psybeam. But god the next muck was a bitch. As you might expect, it spams the move Minimize, but also being quite tanky and having good stats, and this eventually gets the better of my whole team. I almost take it out, but Koga just uses a Hyper Potion. This was not pleasant to do. Eventually I did beat his muck, but at this point my team was too crippled and lost. The next attempt goes even worse, as Muck also spams Acid Armor in addition to Minimize, and at that point I don't even bother seeing this battle through, I just reset as there's no way I'm going to get past his hacks. Man, I'm getting pummeled here. If you wish not to fight back, I understand, but, I but next try, I come up with a plan. I gave Butterfree the TM Psychic, and now it can plow through Koga's team. It one hit kills both of his coughings, and three hit kills his Muck. Be gone! He also surprisingly beats Weezing as well, by using Sleep Powder and then spamming Psychic on it. Man, Butterfree is putting in work here. So now it's time for Sylph Tower, where we go to see our rival again. As always against Rival Green, I put my own Pidgeot against his to see whose is bigger. Mine are bigger than yours. And of course, mine is. Gyarados is strong, but the move Feather Dance is really useful to make physical attackers more manageable. Raticate also gets lucky and gets critical hit on Gyarados. But then Raticate gets roasted by its Charizard, but Primate retaliates. I gave it the move Rock Slide just for this occasion, and it smashes Charizard with a 4 times super effective hit. Screw Charizard and his stupid jerk off in the recent games. Beedrill then cleans up the rest. Even Alkazam, which is funny. It's weird how Alkazam used Feature Sight when it could just use Psychic, but oh well. Boss Giovanni was next, and this was not very hard. A few of my Pokemon fainted. But that's mostly because I was just screwing around on purpose and wasn't taking this battle seriously. He'll be back though for one more walloping. Beatrill's gonna drill his ass cheeks. After this, we go to Sabrina's gym, and this battle was funny, as Beatrill took out half her team. I don't know why Kadabra and Alkazam liked to move Feature Sight so much, but Radke and Pidgeot finished the job, leaving only two more gym badges to go. Damn, in the Pokemon Mansion, I found a wild Radke that's the same level as my own. It kind of invalidates all that time I spent training my own Raticate when there's just random Raticates walking around that are just as strong. Well that sucks. But now we are ready to face Blaine, and this time we are really under leveled. Against him, my Fearow gets hacked by his Growlithe and gets knocked out. Pidgeot comes in, beats it in Ponyta, but faints to Rapidash, who then gets beaten by my rat. But the final Pokemon was a huge threat, a level 47 Arcanine. Well, at least it is nothing on the Pokemon in Fire Red Omega run, because Blaine was a bitch in that challenge. But yet, yeah, my team gets roasted. Arcanine didn't even miss its Fire Blast. Oh my goodness, it's a beast. Primeape can deal half health with Rock Slide, but it's still not enough. Next step, however, the stars align. This time, Butterfree leads the charge and does some damage with Psychic. Eventually, I reach Arcanine with three Pokemon left, but my opening arrives when the move Secret Power paralyzes Arcanine letting Primate finish it off. Phew, that was hard, but still nothing compared to Fire Red Omega. After completing the island subplot, we return for the last gym badge and train a bit preemptively for the next fight against Green. This final fight against Giovanni was surprisingly easy and Butterfree went on a rampage. He uses Sleep Powder and 2 8 kills both of his Rhyhorns with Psychic as they both have low special defense. Duck Trio and Needle Queen also go down as they don't have any super effective moves they can use. It seems like it'll sweep, which must be really embarrassing for Giovanni getting swept by Butterfree. He really sucks. But no, the king is out and stops the sweep. Can Beedrill have the same glory as Butterfree? Eh, turns out it can't. Well that was disappointing. But I beat the final gym leader anyway. Now there's one more battle to go before the Pokemon League, but this time Green is not playing games anymore. While my Pidgeot is still better than his, he gets the better of me. Things initially go in my favour with me having the advantage, but his level 53 Charizard was too much and roasted my team. It survived the rock slide, barely. Next time, I need to damage it slightly first, so I can finish it off and not put it into its blaze range. On my next attempt, Green sends out Charizard earlier, and I send out my Radicate first to deal a bit of damage to it. It does its job before getting blasted. Letting Primate come in, take a hit from it, then retaliate with the rock slide to beat it. Be gone. After that, I cleaned up the rest of his team. Once again, Alkazam goes for Future Sight and catches a Mega Kick to the face from Primeape, whereas Psychic would have just easily finished my Primeape off. It's really weird, I don't understand this at all. The AI is really bad in this game. But the rest of his team goes down. Now that is done, 
it's finally time to end this run. We go to Victory Road to do some last minute grinding until we are ready for Elite Four. I get my whole team to level 53 and prepare everyone. I made a save state outside the Pokemon League to prevent my team from levelling up too much during any retries. Then I go to face my first challenge, Lorelei. This sounds not too hard at my level, but the champion sounds very hard, especially since a few minutes ago he gave me a really hard time. Here I lead off with our Beedrill against Lorelei's Dugong. It spams Brick Break and manages to beat down Dugong, but it does go down to her Slowbro, even though Beedrill has a super effective bug advantage. Butterfree then comes in and puts it to sleep as Primeape then switches in and beats it. It also beat Lorelei's Coaster and Jinx in two hits each with its strong fighting type moves, but the final Pokemon Laprats took a hit and retaliated, beating her Primeape. But Radcate was able to come in and finish off his battle, though its double edge attack did surprisingly little damage, but at least the first member is cleared. It only gets harder from here on. Next up is Bruno, and this was slightly harder. This time I led off with my Primeape to counter his Onyxes. However, I ran into a problem, as I realised that Primeape's PP was starting to get used up. So instead, I used Cross Chop to try and preserve it, but annoyingly, because of that, I kept on missing and Primeape got knocked out as a result. Oh well. Next in was Hitmonchan. My Fearow switched in it and almost one shot at it, but Hitmonchan retaliated with Rock Tomb, slowing Fearow down and dealing a lot of damage. So I brought in my Pidgeot to finish it off. The champ was in next, and that was strong, even though Pidgeot has a super effective advantage against it. Pidgeot caught all four of Machamp's hands to the face and was forced to switch out to Butterfree, who was eventually able to deal with Machamp with the move Sidekick. After that, the fight was pretty much over. But the next battle against Agatha was way harder. My team wasn't great at handling these ghost types. I led off with Butterfree, who two shot at Gengar. Luckily, it hit through the double team hacks. Golbat was in next, and that was a threat. For some reason, I switched from Primeape, as I thought it would be able to outspeed and use Rock Slide to take it out. Well, I was wrong, it pretty much threw my primary poly, which was dumb. I beat Golbat eventually with Radkate, but after Arbok came out, the battle just went downhill from there, as Radkate and Beedrill could barely touch their remaining Gengar and Haunter, as they don't have any good moves to hit them with. Well, that first try didn't go well, but I retried this battle and next time I managed to win. Pidgeot beats the first Gengar, Radkate beats Golbat, but goes down along with Beedrill and Pidgeot barely against the Arbok. Fero beats Arbok but goes down to Gengar, then Butterfree and Primeape finish the rest. This was pretty hard as we are a bit outmatched, but now we are almost done with our challenge. We just need to beat Lance now, and he was also not so easy. Lance's Gyarados is very strong and already caused problems, but Butterfree and Radicate managed to take it out with a combined effort. However, Aerodactyl's out next, and this was monstrous. It destroyed half my team with strong super effective rock moves but eventually Pidgeot was able to stop it. I don't see myself winning at this point. I beat Dragonair, but once Dragonite is out, it's all over for me, especially since Butterfree ran out of Psychic PP, but Dragonite is way stronger than any of my Pokemon. It's not easy, so I have to revise my strategy. What I do is I level the whole team up to level 54, just so we're a tiny bit less outclassed. Then I find all the elixirs and ethers to ensure that PP is no longer an issue. Then what I do is I get my trump card, TM bulk up for Primeape. Remember when I mentioned at the start of this video? Well, now it's relevant. God, it's like the AI doesn't know how to handle stat boosts. We return to Lance and this time I get payback. On the next attempt, I have to set up my strategy first so I can sweep. After Aerodactyl comes out, I get my Radicate to use Thunder Wave on it to paralyse it and make it slow. My opening then comes as Aerodactyl goes for Hyper Beam, knocking out Radicate. This lets me switch in Primeape safely to get a free turn as Aerodactyl now is to recharge. It uses Bulk Up, then hits Aerodactyl with Rock Slide, beating it. Dragonite then comes in, and I attack it again with a Rock move, dealing over half health. Nice! Now I can simply 2 hit kill Dragonite, then probably just sweep the rest of his team. That would be the case if it weren't for the fact that Dragonite got a critical hit and knocked out my Primeape in one hit. Oh well, hacks happens, you know. Now the tables have turned on me, but Pidgeot was able to come in and somehow finished Dragonite. Now it's 3 versus 3, it's quite tense, but I beat one of the Dragonairs easily. But Lance's Gyarados, which he switched out, comes back in, and this wrecks my team, leaving only. Oh god, Beedrill, the worst Pokemon on my team. It has to pull through now, or else I die. Luckily, Beedrill somehow finishes off Gyarados, but another Dragonair comes in for one more final showdown. 
This is tense as it's my Beetle versus his Dragonair. I spam Twin Needle and even poison it, but the opponent goes for a strong Hyper Beam and this almost destroys Beetle. It hangs on by a small margin, but we still manage to defeat Lance. Finally, Beedrill got his moment to shine and prove its worth. This means that there's one more final battle to go before we are done. The Champ. I prepare for a truly epic fight here. This definitely has to be the hardest battle yet. We're significantly underleveled here, so we start off with the same strategy we always do against our rival. We do a Pidgeot measuring contest, but this time I spam the move Feather Dance to weaken it. Then I switch out into Butterfree to put it to sleep. Then I switch out again into Primeape. What's this? A different strategy. What I do now is I spam bulk up, then after that I just sweep. Yeah, that was a very anticlimactic way to end this run. Damn. Hell, even as Alkazam was being really stupid again, I even missed once against it, giving it a free turn to attack. It had its chance. Now after using bulk up, Green's whole team goes down to rock slide and brick break. Oh my. So yeah, that's the whole run over. Primeape is broken. Well, Primeape was by far the best member of the team, overall, all of the early game Pokemon I used can be at least somewhat viable late game. With proper moves, natures and EV training, these conventionally bad Pokemon could hold their own. So maybe you should think twice about replacing your early game Pokemon, and maybe you should give these weak Pokemon a chance. Hell, even Beedrill and Butterfree put in work. I guess this concludes the video now. Anyways, thank you all for watching, I really enjoyed making my Fire Red Omega video, so I'd like to continue that series. I'd like to move on to an enhanced Emerald ROM hack before returning to finish Omega. Stay tuned for that. Support me if you like my videos and I will be back very soon. This is Ding Dong signing out.